Well, first of all, my my name is my Christian name is Jerome Dancing Bull. That's my Christian name, but my Herod's name is uh, Mazea Sidubus, two chiefs. And my my uh, young young man's name was uh, Medizash. That's a hoop, you know. But I had one more, but I passed that on to somebody else. But those were the names that were given to me. I had a young name and an old name. So I go by the, the older name right now. And my, there was, uh, as far as my family goes, there's 10 of us, five boys and five girls, you know. I came, like Charlie said, I came when the service boys first, you know, like my dad, just they all got out of the service and, and uh, they were having hard times, you know. They got uh, addicted to liquor. They were, you know, and uh, so I grew up that when I was small, I remember all the, all the uh, men that would came, come back from the service and they would drink, you know, and that's all they knew, you know. And, but I, w I was at that, I was on that, I seen that, you know. But eventually, uh, they quit and they grew up, you know. But uh, there, was a, there was a time there where uh, the kids my age would stick together because they're, their dad was either out on the drunk or something, you know, but he, but yet he was a, a war hero, and we respected him. But that's why I went through that. And my mother took care of us. I, <clears throat> I thank God that my mother never touched alcohol, you know, so, and kept us together. But uh, being that said, my dad was a good man. You know, I understood what he went through, you know. And he, uh, you know, he had an eighth grade education and he couldn't really talk a word of English, you know. But yet he did um, get things done, you know. So, so I was at that age, so that was in the 50s and early 60s, you know. But yet we still hung on to our gods, you know, our medicines, which brought us this far. And I'm glad that we did. There was a time in the mornings when my mother would sit us all down and explain to us who you're related to. You're related to so-and-so. You're related to him. You can't tease this guy, but you can tease this person. But we never questioned her. If she said, I was related to so-and-so, I never said, how? She just told me I was, and that was good enough for me. But nowadays, kids, if you go and tell them that, uh, you're related to somebody and they're gonna say how. And then all I can say is my mother told me and I never questioned her, stuff like that, you know. And like Charlie said, I grew up in the societies. And I, when I'm, I'm from a place called Shell Creek and we're Hoska Hiradzes, you know. In fact, I think we're the last stronghold of the Hiradzes tradition, you know. We kept it going. We still have our tra traditions, we still have our societies our practices and it, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in three, three societies right now. I grew up in one, the Fox Society, and I, that's a, a young man's society. And then I got adopted into another society called the Antelope Society. Charlie might have touched base on that, but I'm, I was a holder of two positions in that society. So that to have two positions in that society is kind of rare, but I did. And I can only name one more person that had that, but he's long gone, but he was, you know, I, I often thought about it, you know. And that was something to hold two positions in that society. And, and then I'm a, I'm a crier for a, another woman's society called Mahiawike, that's the enemy women. I'm the crier for them. If they want to have a meeting, if they want to get a hold of their members, they come and see me and then I tell them when and where, when to meet, what to bring, like that. That's one of, that's one of my positions. And that's, uh, that's the Enemy Women's Society. Mm -hmm. So. Is, is your tribal affiliation then Hidatsa? Hidatsa, Mandan. At one time, People, growing up in my household, there was three languages, English, Mandan, and Hiraza. That was all spoken on, 
in my house. And that Mandan language, I never, I took that language for granted. I never thought I, people would lose that language. I'd give anything to hear somebody talk Mandan fluently. Because in my household, they did. But I didn't. My mother, my grandmother would talk Mandan to my mother. But she wouldn't talk Mandan to us. She would talk Hidaza. And she would talk Mandan to my mother, and my mother would answer her back in Hidaza, you know. So you had two different languages talking back, forth, understanding each other, you know. Do you know why? Why she would respond in Hidaza? I, I don't know. My grandmother talked all three languages, you know. We never thought about that, you know, what she did. But um, I don't know why my grandma never talked Mandan to us. She taught us the dances, you know, of the things that they did in Mandan. And we would, uh, I remember her singing songs, you know, going like this with her hands. And we were like, um, I don't know, four or five. And we would, uh, you guys can quote me on this, we'd, we would dance like bears. You know, we would put our hands up and dance, you know. And you don't see that no more, you know. But maybe it's died, but that's what they used to make us do. And I still remember those days, you know. Yeah. But uh, to this day, uh, I very, I know the Mandan language is thriving, but I've never heard it like I used to hear it. And my, my aunt, she still talks Mandan, but she talks it out to those guys. So I'll probably never, I'll probably never learn that language, you guys. Yeah.